What do you have to say for people who don't fit in your definition of man or woman? I'm a biologist. Mm -hmm. I understand the biology. Are you saying that a woman is only a person who has two X chromosomes and a man who is someone who only has an X and a Y chromosome? I think that's the scientific definition. Yes. It's actually not because there can be people with XXY. There can be Y chromosome mm -hmm. inactivation. The way that this biology works mm -hmm. is that you have genes. Those mm -hmm. genes make proteins. Those proteins develop the traits that you define as men and women. They develop the features that you define as male. They develop the genitalia. Mm -hmm. But you can be a woman with female genitalia and be XY. You can be a man, but you could... You can have XX chromosomes. Yeah, I understand what you're talking about, Grace. You're talking about a very rare condition known as intersexed. One right. in 100 people experience chromosomal differences in sex. Okay, but not one in 100 have different genitalia or ambiguous genitalia. And what do you say to those people? Well, what you say is that's a situation that is not the norm. We're not saying that they're not people, obviously. As I understand it, maybe you know more about it than me. Well, when you do have a truly intersexed person, at, at that point, either the parents or when they're old enough, they can decide which way they're going to orient themselves and they can get the appropriate surgery. But that's not what we're experiencing so in our culture. It's okay for people to decide their gender. In that situation, but that's not what we're talking about in our culture. What we're talking about in our culture are people with perfectly normal functioning sexual organs trying to have them removed and trying to transition to another gender, which is impossible scientifically. Have you ever doubted that you're a man? Mm -hmm. You've doubted that you... Oh, have I ever doubted I'm a man? No, I have never doubted then I'm a man. Then what do you say to a transgender person who has never doubted their gender? You're saying that we all change and that obviously transgenderism is a product of some kind of phase, but you've never doubted that you're a man. So no, where's, I'm, your, look, where's your development of this change? Grace, I'm not denying there are people truly with gender dysphoria. I've already said that. What I'm saying is, is the way out of that problem is not surgery according to the data. Okay? Psychiatry is the way out of that problem. I also don't agree with your statement that after surgery, you implied that transgender people are more likely to commit suicide after surgery. But the statistics say that transgender people are more likely to commit suicide because of people like, because of arguments that you make that they're invalid. No, I'm and not I'm saying, saying they're, they're invalid. invalid. I'm just saying that you implied that it's the surgery that's causing suicide No, it's rates. not. Uh, what yeah, I'm, I'm saying, saying is the surgery doesn't fix anything. That's the point. The same, it's practically the same rate, whether they have the surgery or not. If you woke up and grew breasts today, would you would like them to be removed? There are many. Say that again. Could, have you ever heard of gynecomastia? I had it. And if, okay, so did you have that fixed? Yes, I did. And did that make you feel affirmed in your gender and comfortable no, in your body? No, no. When I was in the Navy, nobody knows this, by the way. Jesus, <laughs> now I'm revealing my, I need a HIPAA form to sign here or something. You don't have to talk no, about it. No, what, what, what I'm saying is, yes, I've had that myself and, and, and had it surgically removed when I was in the Navy. Yeah. And do you feel more comfortable in your body and more affirmed in your gender because of that? Well, it wasn't a gender thing for me. It was the fact, well, I can't even get into it now because it had nothing to do with my gender. Okay. So it, 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 it had to do with a, it had to do with the fact that it looked really odd. <laughs> Let me just put it that way. Okay. But Grace, my point is, is if we truly care about people, are we going to try and force them down a road, particularly as children, into a solution to a problem which is proven not to be a solution. You just said that having that surgery made you feel better about yourself. No, I'm, that has nothing to do with transgender I surgery. Think, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't changing my sex. I was having breast tissue removed. Okay? I, I was always a man. Mm -hmm. Okay? So... And say that I have XY chromosomes, but I'm born with female genitalia and female body types, but I believe I'm a man. Should I not be allowed to have that breast tissue well, removed? As an adult, you can do whatever you want. Yes, that's M fine. My problem is with the children. That's, that's, where, that's where I'm having a real problem. Is there a I magic button at 18 that instantly makes you feel like you know who you are and absolutely what your gender is? I don't no, well, that's... I think for women, it's probably like 15. For men, it's 37. 
to be honest with you, okay? Because men don't develop as quickly as women, all right? Okay, um, let's stop there for a few seconds and um, talk about what I've been said here already. First thing I see about this young lady, I don't know if you can also see it, is that she is someone that just has been indoctrinated and she believes she's doing the right thing. But from a good place, I don't know, maybe you can sense it, but I sense it. So she feels that what she's doing is the right thing. The second thing I see is that because of her previous knowledge, um, she, you know, how do I put this now? You know, when it comes to life, there's always many, many things that are in between. But regardless of the things that are in between, the stats and the foundation remain the same. So maybe because of one reason or the other, different things can happen. So because of her knowledge, she thinks that um, these intersex people or these people that have different kind of uh, gender dysphoria have as should, should be treated as normal. Now, the first thing I'm going to say is anybody that has a mental issue, telling them that their state is perfect, is not helping any it's not helping them a person has gender dysphoria you don't come and tell them that yes they should have found what they have many of these people have literal serious psychotic problems they are taking antidepressant medication and don't get me started me i personally believe that it was done by some people don't get me started on it because when it comes to things like this it's always about where is the money where is the money so when you see that a whole generation is suffering from the same thing is and is very widespread it's not an accident is because it is organized and orchestrated by a group of people in order to make it in order for them to you know let me put it this way if there is no supply uh, demand there will be no supply the reason you are seeing gender dysphoria and all these things happening everywhere is because some people have created a demand in order for them to supply their drugs. It is all about the money. If you follow the money, it usually takes you to where they are. Also, another thing I see is that um, she has been trying to push this idea that a, and I've always said this, if something is not the general population, is outside of the general, it's not that they, those people should be killed or those people should be hated, no. But we should understand that they are not the norm. The norm does not uh, and should not uh, the minority should not and should not and uh, should not make rules for the generality. What we call democracy, for example, is that the majority makes the rule, even if the majority is by one. So what they are trying to say is that we should let a group. That is why America is falling. America is allowing a small group determine what everybody is doing. And it is so bad that the majority can't even say anything. A small group can cancel the entire nation. So all these things need to be corrected. Let's continue with this video. But no, no, we've just chosen 18 kind of as the, the adulthood crossing point. Although for some issues, it's 21, like drinking. Okay. So no, maybe it's later than 18. Okay. My big problem, and I would say this to somebody who's 37, that the surgery does not uh -huh. appear to help anyone. And if you want more data on this, you can go to sexchangeregret.com. Sexchangeregret.com. But I wouldn't even be talking about this issue unless I thought the current way the culture is going is hurting people. And it is. Why, why would I bring all this abuse on myself? What he said is also very brilliant. He said, it is not about adults. It's not about adults doing whatever they like. You know, there's liberty in America and in most places of the world where when you become an adult, they, are, they assume that you should know what is right and wrong. It is when you are forcing little kids, a child that, that feels today that is Superman and wears a cape and jump off the roof. How can that person not tell you that this is his gender. He feels he's a man. And you will take it seriously. You know, one of the things that is no longer acceptable in America is disciplining your child. Many of these things will die if they just bring disciplining back. The Bible says foolishness is in the heart of a child. 
it is cane. A whip will bring it out. Many at times we don't know that these children, they are just following the foolishness in their heart. They don't know better. So how can an adult, I heard one very strange story where the lady was saying, in order to change a baby's diaper, you have to ask for consent. I realized that these people, they, they are suffering from the sickness of over-empathy. Immediately you become over-empathic. What you do is that you destroy society. Empathy has a place, it ends. When, you're, when you cannot help yourself, then somebody higher has to help you. In this kind of case now, many of these people are suffering terribly, terribly. I cannot imagine what it means to say you feel like you're a man or you feel like a woman. And it's not to say that their feelings is not um, important. But their feelings shouldn't control their life. Their feelings should be the end and be all of their life. I also respect Frank Turek for talking about his own case because I'm not sure I would have been able to say that. <laughs> I'm not sure I would have been able to say that I, I had breast tissue removed and all those stuff. I'm not sure I would have been able to see that. So this is a very fantastic video. Let's conclusion to everything I've said. God knows how he created us and why he created us. And if you check the design of everything, you see that there's a corrective measure that he placed inside. That is why in the past, you don't hear many people talking about gender dysphoria. It's because many people decide to, what they call it, play out their feelings. You know, there are many feelings you have. You, you, sometimes you feel like killing a person. Imagine if you played out every single feeling you have. This world will burn to the ground. The reason we call ourselves mature is because you have a feeling, but you don't play out to it. You don't, you don't say, I have a feeling, so I must walk completely to that feeling. If you like this video, I would like you to do me a favor. Give it a like, subscribe, share, and comment. I would like to see your comment down there. God bless you and see you in the next one. Shalom.